Hey all, welcome back. So in our last video, we focused on the new start screen, taskbar, and file explorer for Windows 11. And now we're moving on to the experience of using applications on Windows 11 through the Surface Pro X. Now, we can tell that there are some big changes already made to the new store and the new applications like the new TikTok application. But we're still waiting on some big updates, specifically with the Amazon App Store and access to Android applications, which will make an even bigger difference. But through this video, I'll talk about what the experience is like so far. Let's just get right into it. On first glance, it also looks pretty similar, but we'll go ahead and install some applications to see if it changes the experience much. Visually, there are some differences in the way that this is laid out. Let's go ahead and we'll open up TikTok to get the, the TikTok experience on Windows 10. A 3.1 average of 44 ratings is not the best start, but I mean, considering, oh, wait, okay, there you go. You see the distribution there. 45% five stars and 43% one stars. So uh, TikTok steals your data. China has your data. That's an interesting review. I wonder what the other reviews say. Stop using TikTok, please. It's a sky rare. Giving me some weird stuff in my feed. Later Gator, Chinese spyware, spyware for the enemy. <laughs> Just a web app, pointless. Just, just points to a page in Edge browser. So this is interesting. One thing I've been noticing is a lot of these applications are just web apps, so they're not really um, the full experience that you'd expect for with the normal application. Yes, you're getting most of the same experience, and I think web apps are great, but some of the features are really not up to snuff, and it really doesn't feel like anything different than just a different container or a different package for web apps. So let's go ahead and open it up, hopefully, it's installed. Again, I just naturally want to swipe over, but okay, let's open up all apps. Let's scroll all the way down to TikTok, open it up. Maybe it was updating or something like that. Again, it's probably going to prompt me to log in or not. So it looks like I can browse without a login. Oh man. Okay. This just shows me, uh, So I'm stuck on the trending page. Now let's go ahead and log in to see if I can get a different experience. Okay, so here you go. Now we are into TikTok and yes, it is purely a web UI. Like, I mean, it looks like Instagram or Twitter. I can't swipe through TikToks. I, can, I can't swipe either direction through TikToks. I literally have to click the arrow button in order to get through TikToks, which kind of defeats the purpose of TikTok. Like it's supposed to be a very interactive sort of experience, but that's not the case here. I can't hold down and touch in order to say I don't like something, which I tend to do a lot. And like having the comments and everything show up on the side here, while it's more information, so it's making use of the wider display, it's not TikTok. Like this does not feel like a TikTok experience. So, I'm not sure why Microsoft advertised having TikTok as a launch uh, partner for this whole for Windows 11, because frankly, it this is not the way that they want to be delivering an experience. This is not a great experience. So, OK. I think that's all I needed to see of TikTok. So apart from TikTok, I've noticed that most applications that you can install that aren't like first party Microsoft applications are in fact web apps. So Spotify is a great example where it is basically just a web UI converted into a Microsoft app. And unfortunately, what this means is while the experience is usually okay, it doesn't really feel like it was made for a touch experience. And some of the features that you might get on a traditional application are still limited. So for example, on a lot of applications for like Netflix, right? You might be able to download Netflix locally to your, to your phone. You can't get that as far as I know on the windows 10 application, but I'll have to check to see if that's the case. It, it's definitely, I checked HBO Max, I believe, and I unfortunately wasn't able to download content to HBO Max, the application. But I think generally web apps are kind of a good in-between until Microsoft can actually generate web apps or generate, 
you know, developers that could actually create apps for their for their platform. But I don't think web apps are really the end game. Now, ironically enough, on my iPad, I usually end up in web apps in anyways, or, or websites anyways, rather than the native applications, because sometimes websites are just a little bit better at handling native links, for example, like Getting from Twitter to YouTube in the browser seems to be easier for me on an iPad instead of getting from the Twitter app to the YouTube application. But there's one big question that I actually have when it comes to apps on Windows 10. So notably, if Android apps are now supported through the Amazon store, then we are going to be getting a large, large bevy of new apps coming into the Windows store, which is excellent. It's great to see. But ironically enough, one thing that I have noticed that's a big difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11 is that if you look over here, compared to tablet mode, that's missing one key button. And that button is specifically the back button. So the back button was pretty common in Windows 10 to be able to get to previous screens, but notably you don't have it here. now. Granted, it doesn't matter for a lot of Windows 10 applications because generally it's baked in. So if I go ahead, oh, actually that's not the case. So if I go ahead and open up one of these things, Halo Cosplay, then there's an escape button that basically gets me back to the same page. And then technically I could go back to the For You or press the TikTok Home in order to get to the home page. But notably you can see that getting between these, I'm not going to be able to go back to the previous page. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Mr. Gardner's or, um, okay. So maybe MKBHD, I'll open up MKBHD. So now I'm in MKBHD and I cannot get back to the previous page of Halo. Windows or in Windows 10, there was a back button that would allow you to do that. In Android, there's you can basically swipe from either side or there's the back button on screen. In iOS, there is a swipe gesture from the left in order to get back to the previous screen. Hey, look, okay. So ironically in web applications, you can actually swipe right and left just like you could in the web in order to get back and forth. I'm curious whether that's the case for applications, Android applications running on Windows 10. I'm not sure whether that's going to be the case. In addition, I'm wondering how notifications will actually be handled because notifications on, on Android, for example, or on iOS are very, very specific. And Windows 10, as far as I've seen, doesn't really have the same sort of robustness when it comes to notifications as like iOS does, for example. And so I'm interested in seeing if all of those Android applications route their notifications through through the traditional notifications that you see on Windows 10, because that's going to quickly become, it's qu going to quickly make Microsoft realize how they need to update this similarly to you, what you get on other platforms. So now I think what's what we'll try and do is we'll go ahead and try and open up some of the applications that I haven't been able to previously on the Surface Pro X to see if it solved the whole 64-bit issue. Now, notably, I haven't seen any sort of news on 64-bit. So this is, we're, we're learning as we go. So let's go ahead and try and install OBS. Let's try and get the 64-bit. Okay, so Windows 10 Streamlabs. Okay, it's not clear whether this is a 64-bit downloader installer or not. Let's go ahead and install one of the other things that I've tried to install is Nord, NordVPN, which has a 64-bit installer, Norb. And there it is. Um, I'm not sure where, it, yeah, okay, so this hit with NordVPN, not Streamlabs, but here you go. This program can only be installed on versions of Windows designed for the following processor ac architectures. There's your 64-bit slash x86. So, nope, so Nord is not installable. Streamlabs, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Just from the look of it, this looks like it's a Windows application. It doesn't look like a traditional 64-bit x86 app. Yeah, it looks very, very simple. So chances are that's just, that's just a Windows application. 
Now let's try a fun one. Let's try the Adobe Suite. Okay, now the real question is, I'm installing Photoshop, because that could, but that could be the ARM version. Now, if I go into video, yep, Premiere Pro is not off offered as an option. So Creative Cloud is clearly seeing this as the ARM-based version of Windows and therefore disallowing you from doing anything with it. So despite Microsoft claiming that Windows 11 is going to be a huge step in using applications, right now we're still stuck with the same web apps that we had on Windows 10 and generally not enough apps to really change the experience. Now, we're still waiting on Amazon to bring on Android applications through the Amazon App Store, and I'm crossing my fingers that that's going to be an excellent experience. If Amazon can bring the entire Amazon App Store over to Windows 10, or at least a big portion, then in a day or overnight, however you want to say it, Microsoft will all of a sudden have more applications on the Windows 10 Store made for tablet or mobile experiences than Mac OS does through iPad and I iOS apps, which has already just been such a disappointing experience because most applications, most developers are not bringing their applications over to Mac OS through the iPad and Mac OS, iPad and iOS apps. But we'll just have to see it when it happens and you can be sure that I'm going to be covering it like crazy because I'm really interested in the experience. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to get subscribed so you can catch the final video in this series, which is going to be specifically focused on the experience of using the Surface Pro X as a tablet with gestures, which the gestures are very different than Windows 10. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.